Ephesians 4.26 says, be angry and sin not. How do you handle anger when you're angry? We have three profound prohibition that follows fast on the heels of that scripture. Sin not, let not the sun go down on your wrath, and give no place to the devil. How do we do that? I'm gonna give you a few points to consider. Number one, slow down before you act or speak. Number two, soft answers will turn away wrath. Number three, select a place and time to address the matter. Number four, state or write down the matters of co for the conversation. Number five, stay on subject. Number six, solution must be your goal, not winning or proving a point. Number seven, seek the assistance of the Holy Spirit. And number eight, be prepared to say, I'm sorry, or I forgive you. To feel anger is legitimate. To feel anger makes a lot of sense. There are legitimate reasons to be angry, but this is what Jesus is saying. In the kingdom of God, there is no legitimate reason to let that anger destroy you. You could feel it. It's legitimate for you. You've been betrayed. It's legitimate to feel anger. You've been sinned against. It's, it's right to feel anger. Something, um, um, some injustice came your way. It's right to feel angry. And Jesus says, in the kingdom of God, there's no legitimate reason to let that anger consume you. And so the, in, in the book of Ephesians says, be angry and sin not. Be angry, feel it, but don't allow the evil one to use that anger in you in such a way that it corrodes your soul. Thankful, grateful, day 11. Uh, this week I've been pondering on Naaman who had leprosy. He was a great commander, but he had leprosy. This is 2 Kings chapter 5. Chapter five. Now, Naaman was going to get his healing. He didn't know how his healing was going to come, but when he got his directions on how to get his healing, he was angry. I think a lot of times we want our healing to come the way we want it to come, but then when it comes a certain way, we get mad about it. So I thank God today, and I'm grateful for the liberty to be angry, but to be obedient anyway. If we get instructions in a certain way, then to do it anyway. Now, he was angry because he didn't want to get in the so-called dirty water, the River Jordan. He wanted to get in some cleaner water, but he had wise counsel, which is wonderful because his wise counsel said, now, if uh, the prophet, the man of God, Elijah would have told you to do something that was hard, you would have did it. Why not do this easy thing like dipping in the water? He ended up doing it. He was obedient anyway, even though he was angry and he got his healing. So God. I can remember, and I'm old enough when they printed the sermons of the local pastors in the daily newspaper. I remember when politicians couldn't be elected until they were a part of a church. The gender thing is scary. What is being done to children is scary. What has been done to our country, and I'm not talking political, is scary. How can you love people like that? I don't want to love them. I want to pray for that they get the hive. I want to pray some bad happens to them. But the truth is, God hasn't given us any wiggle room. If you would like to see awakening in America, don't get obedient. You can't pull it off. Don't be nice. You can't be nice. If you want to see awakening in America, ask God to give you love for the people who don't belong to him. But more than that, love for the people who do.